In this lesson, students will participate in a hands-on activity in which they will simulate different kinds of birds with a variety of beak designs in order to gather food from a variety of niches. The number of materials that we've described for this activity is designed for a group of 28. When it comes to beak choices, we've chosen spoons, so we have seven of these, but you can also give each child two, so you'll need 14. We used binder clips, or you could also use clothespins. You'll need seven of these. You can use skewers or chopsticks, and you'll need 14 of these, two per child. And we also chose forceps or tweezers, so you'll need seven sets of these. After each child has chosen their beak design, you may want to explain to them what each beak represents. For this purpose, we've included a chart in the lesson plan explaining each kind of beak. When it comes to food choices, you can choose a variety of things. Here, we decided to use toothpicks, dried beans, elbow macaroni, and rice grains. But some other really good options are paper clips, rubber bands, cereal with O's or marshmallows in it, or gummy worms. But you should always be considerate about student allergies when choosing food sources. Some other general supplies that you're going to want to have are going to be 28 plastic cups, clear as best, and these will work as their stomachs. Also, you'll want to have the tables provided for you in the lesson plan, as well as graph paper. So now that the students have selected their beak type, and they each have a plastic cup, you should sit them or stand them in a circle around a table or an area where the food will be dispersed. Now, you might want to break into smaller groups, depending on the amount of people that you have to monitor. Explain to the group that they are now hungry birds. They can only eat by picking up food with their selected tool, which represents their type of beak and they need to put it in their cup, which is their stomach. The cup must remain upright at all times, and they must hold the beak in one hand and the cup in the other at all times. Tell them that one type of food will be spread out at a time, in the middle of the circle, and evenly in all directions. And when you say go, you will allow the birds to feed for one to two minutes, or until all the food is gone. Now, depending on your students, you may need to monitor them. This activity can induce a very competitive and excited reaction, just as in nature. So safety must come first. You can always say that you are a hawk and that you will remove any birds that are causing a nuisance. Anyone found injuring another bird or being aggressive with their beak should have to sit out. And those that are sitting out can observe and take notes on the bird's behavior. So once you have said stop, have the students count the items in their stomachs and record their data on the recording sheet. This is a good point to encourage some thinking. Excited students may already be comparing their catch to others. Have the students think about what would happen if the bird did not collect any food. Would it die? What other things could it do to survive? Now prepare them for the next food item and repeat the process as before for each item that you have. After all the food items have been collected, you may want to have a group discussion. You could ask them some of the following questions. What did they notice about their ability to grasp the food items based on their beak. Did everyone with their beak type have the same difficulties or successes? And what did they notice about their behavior and the behavior of those around them? Now you're going to want to tally up the group totals and record them somewhere for later. For the second part of this activity, have the students again gather around the feeding area. Tell them that in a normal ecosystem, they may not just have one type of food available at a time. You may want to ask them what would they do if all the food types were available. Spread out all of the food materials and allow four minutes for feeding, again monitoring student behavior. After the four minutes is up or the food is gone, have students collect and record data again on their data sheets, indicating how many of each type of food they were able to gather. Again, this is a good time to have a group discussion. You may want to ask what were their strategies this time to gathering food? Was it different than their previous times? And how so? Ask the students which beak type would be most successful if all these types of birds flew into an island together and the only food there was the macaroni. Which bird beak would be the most successful? Have them explain why. In any habitat, food is limited and the types of foods available may vary. 
animals that are better adapted to take advantage of available foods will fare better than those who are less well adapted and thus live to pass on their genes to the next generation. Understanding the idea of adaptive advantage opens the door to understanding populations and ecosystems, as well as the process of evolution. It is important for veterinarians to be a part of this activity because we are the local resource for information on animal behavior, nutrition, and ecosystems.